It was five years ago that I brought you this video. How to play Minecraft Java Edition PC on any Android tablet or phone. It was an incredibly popular video. We're in 2021. It's about time I brought you an updated tutorial. So welcome back everyone. I hope you're having an absolutely fantastic day. Don't be alarmed. Today's video, we're not playing Minecraft Pocket Edition, the Bedrock version. This is not clickbait. Yes, I am going to show you how to play Minecraft Java, but on any Android tablet or phone. The first thing you are going to need to do is head over to the Google Play Store. There is one specific app that you are looking for. It is called Pojav Launcher. So P-O-J-A-V and then it's the top one right there. And you are specifically looking for this app. Now the creator of this was the creator of the Boardwalk app, which is the tutorial that I brought you five years ago. This has over 1 million plus downloads. So let's install it. Once you've downloaded it, you just gotta launch it. When it pops up, just click allow. It will install a couple of files. I did a bunch of testing and searching about this app. It does seem to be a legitimately and solid app. So at this point, you can either put your email and username in or a password, or you are able to play offline. You'll just tap in as login as offline account. Now I have an account, so I'm just gonna log in using my Microsoft login. This will load. Once you've logged in, it's going to switch to this screen. Now, if you've ever seen Minecraft Java Edition, you've probably seen a screen very similar to this. Just to show you that I am on tablet, you can see I'm definitely on a tablet here. So at the top, it says Pojav Launcher. It says the original creator of the Boardwalk app. It explains a bunch of things here. Now, you are able to literally play every version from 1.0 all the way up to the latest version 1.17.1 now the 1.17 versions as me making this video are not 100 percent working i'll show you as an example like whenever you select a specific version 1.17.1 as an example it's going to instantly start to install those files now for me it keeps popping up with this and i just can't get 1.17 to work so i don't think it's fully supporting 1.17 if you do have any specific crashes, just tap on the crash log and it will tell you. You've got the news here, you've got the development console. Something else I want to mention with this is you are also able to install mods. Mods, Forge, Optified, it can all be installed via this mod right here. And if you do want to see a part two, hit that like button and I'll teach you how to install specific mods. On the bottom left, you have settings. Now, mess around with these because you're going to have to cater these settings to your specific device. I'm using a Samsung Galaxy Tab. Can't remember what version it is. Regardless, there's a bunch of things that you are able to mess around with here. So again, customize it to your own liking. At the bottom, you've got the release versions, which is obviously the full releases. You can even access snapshots, old alpha, and even the older, older alpha versions. So by default, this app has around about 300 MB. I recommend giving it a lot more depending on your device, but honestly, the more the better. As I mentioned, we've accessed betas as well, so you can see all the pre-releases, and this goes all the way back to very, very old versions. So by default, whenever you load up this app, it wants you to play the version 1.7.10. I'm guessing that's like the most stable version on this app. So let's load it, we press play. It's then gonna pop up with this. It tells me the allocated um, megabytes that I've given this, this app, and as you can see, that is in fact Minecraft Java. Now, as for the whole button layout, I'll explain a lot more in game. You tap on GUI on the bottom left, you can get rid of it. Now, this is something really, really cool. Top right, you have access to a mouse. So obviously I'm on a touchpad, so I can still tap on options and things. Let's bump my FOV up a little bit because I typically usually play like 85 or something like that. And then you've got music and sounds. You're able to customize these to however you like, exactly the same way as you do on Minecraft. Um, but let's just go back to the main screen and tap on the mouse. So you can move the mouse with one and then you tap, like you double tap on it. But what, sorry, just tap on it again. You've got controls. Don't recommend messing around with them, by the way, because you don't need to. Let's go to done. You've got languages. You've got so many different settings. Literally every setting that Minecraft has by default, you're able to mess around with it. Again, if you're having lag issues, mess around with the video settings. So for example, I don't know how stable this is going to be. So I'm going to reduce that to about eight for now. 
and I am going to improve the brightness here. There is one setting I highly recommend changing. So in options and video settings, you've got GUI scale. Set it as, as big as possible. It just makes things a lot easier for you to see when it comes to creating anything and accessing specific settings. So we're just going to go to single player here. I'm going to delete this world and we're going to create a brand new world. We're just going to change this to creative, more options. Feel free to mess around with these. And I know on both Minecraft, Java, and the Bedrock version, oh, we're going to need to get our keyboard back up here, that the Seed, Echo Soldier, all as one word, is a maze of biome. So we're just going to load this up. And just like that, we now have access to Minecraft, Java, but on my Android tablet. So let me go through the buttons and explain a couple of things. Again, GUI just simply hides it. Don't recommend using the mouse setting in game. Top left, we have the debug screen. Yes, that is the Minecraft Java debug screen. I mean, it's not as perfect as Minecraft Java, but you still have access it via the tap of a button. You have access to chat. I'm just gonna get rid of chat. You have access to the keyboard, access to tab, and check this out, access to changing your perspective via the tap of a button. Third, it says, we change it to third from behind. This is third from in front, all via the tap of a button. How can they do this on this? But when we've asked for years for it to be added to Minecraft Pocket Edition, the Bedrock version, it hasn't been added. We'll stay in this perspective. So, the buttons, you've got arrows, pretty simple. You've got forward, left, right, and back. The one where it says P-R-I, that is your attack button, okay? That's your attack button. The middle one, double tap it, it crouches you. Left, GUI hides it. Inventory pops up your inventory. And we even get the advancement taking, uh, that, uh, taking inventory. And you can access whatever you want. Like, even the old textures are available in this. And again, I think the reason why people like this version is pure and simply because... Uh, the, the attacking that we have on this, you're able to attack like normal. There's no charging or anything like that. And there's even a crouch. Is that, is that, a, is that a defense? Am I able to defend here? I am. Blocking. Oh, wow. All right, let's change our game. So again, forward and then this little button on the right hand side is just a button, right? For you to jump. You can jump this way. And then you've also got, if I slide, slide across here, you can actually add custom buttons and controls. There's so many different settings you're able to mess around with. Honestly, the game doesn't even lag for me. Like if you just wanted to do a legitimate survival, but on Minecraft Java, you're able to do it. It'll take a little bit of time getting used to it. But if you played Pocket Edition before, then you will really pick this up pretty easily. Also again, top tip seed, Echo Soldier, all one word, in caps, gives you the perfect seed to start off with. I'm gonna get the question, can you play Minecraft Java servers? The answer is yes, let's go to multiplayer, let's go to add a server, and we are going to add ipixel.net, and we're just gonna go done. This is gonna find the server. Now it does tell you that you need 1.8, all the way up to 1.17, so let's back out and let's use a 1.8 version. So instead of 1.7.10, let's go to 1.8. 9. I think that's the version before the combat update and let's just load it It's gonna install files and then it's gonna boot up. So now we're on version 1.8.9 And yes, it has saved my previous settings down to the GUI and yes, we have access to Hypixel Let's join the server And just like that it says welcome back to Hypixel again This is a Java account that I'm using as well. I have two separate Java accounts um, I don't know how laggy or how successful this is going to be. Again, the more memory, the more RAM that your device has, the better it's going to be. But you're also able to play all of these game modes. I mean, granted, you're probably going to get destroyed. But yeah, you can play servers. And this is the Minecraft version 1.16.5. Fluently playing Minecraft without any problem at all. But I will mention the more recent versions, 1.14, 15, 16, and 17, will be a lot more demanding on your device. And my world is still there. Here's the latest game rules that they introduced as well. The ability to have always day on and stuff like that. Um, I'm just going to create up the brand new world though. But... Oh yeah, even if you wanted to do a hardcore version, you can do that. And 
You can also access like uh, the custom flats, the better custom flats, the cave type biomes, and so much more. Let's boot it up. So this is definitely a little bit more demanding and a little bit laggier, so I would definitely have to reduce my settings if I wanted to actively play this. If we just go to settings, you're, again, it would have messed around with these settings inside of here. Probably, I probably honestly have to reduce my render distance a little bit as well, just, just to be safe and mess around with all different things. But it works, and it's so much better than the Boardwalk app because it's a lot more updated, and there's so many different settings you can mess around with. So. All I can say is I hope you did enjoy today's video. If you did, please be sure to hit that like button. I really appreciate it. Have a great day, and I'll catch you next time. Goodbye.